All right. Uh, whoop. I'm in the man cave, uh, just trying to put a few thoughts together, waiting, kind of waiting on God to prompt me in some direction. Um, and I wanted to do uh, a series on spiritual gifts. And, and Butch, I, I, I may just send this to you because I'm just putting some thoughts together. But Nathan, uh, I may send this to you as well. Um, and even Caleb, maybe. Uh, so I, I, I was... Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned uh, one time I went to a camp and I was asked to do, uh, they were doing a series on spiritual gifts. And they um, they asked me to do like 10 or 15 minutes at the end of each lesson. And I and the Lord gave me something every day and an example. And it went great. I don't remember exactly what I talked about. And Butch, you asked me the other day when I was thinking, when I think about prophecy, how do I know a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or a prophecy. And I, and I probably didn't explain it well enough, but I just said, I don't really think about that. And so as I'm looking through the list of gifts and stuff like that, I, uh, I started to kind of relate to some of my martial arts background. And, uh, and so I'm going to tell a little martial arts story, and then I'm going to try to spin that into, uh, my understanding of, of how I flow in spiritual gifts, but the necessity to break them down for people who have not yet learned how to do that. All right, so this may not go butch. It may just go to you and Nathan and Caleb who all have done martial arts and uh, the people that have no clue, uh, they ain't, ain't gonna make no sense what I'm saying. But I started, butch, I started with you when I was six years old and I just remember, I don't remember anything about you. I just remember you were like a, an idol to me. You were on the front row, and I was at Glenn Beverly's. And uh, and I, uh, from 6 to 12, I had never won a, a trophy at a karate tournament. Um, I could kick. I could do the stuff, but I just wasn't. Uh, and, I, and I've got a son that's a little, a little frail himself. He's not. I've got some that are super athletes, and I've got some kids that, that are not. And, and one of my sons reminds me of me when I was young and just, you know, my, I think my mama put me in karate cause she was worried about me. I mean, really. And so I did it until I was 12 and it wasn't until I was 12. I, I won my first third place trophy at Mississippi state at a karate tournament. And it was sudden death. Well, actually I lost my first fight. So it was four people. So it was double elimination. So after I lost for the 10,000th time in a tournament, I was up in the stands on the edge of tears, and they said, come back, come back, you got to fight again. So we fought, and it was like two to two. And it was sudden death, and my foot pad came off, and the corner judge um, who uh, was uh, fixing my foot pad said, you want to win this fight? And I said, yeah. He said, well, kick him in the back of the head with a round kick. It's wide open. So I did it, bam, and I won. And it turns out the guy was Ray Reed, found out he did classes in Starkville. And when I got under Ray... I thrived, and and I, I worked. I was a I was a green belt or a purple belt when I got there, and and soon transitioned to red belt because they didn't have purple. I think it was purple, and um, I worked and I worked and I worked, and I became the state point fighting champion in two divisions. And I and I was still just twelve years old, but uh, I would go to the black belt. I mean, I would go to the adult class and the kids class. I was working out four hours, four days a week, and 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 just something turned on in me. But, you know, I grew up in public school, and uh, I grew up, you know, uh, riding bus 41, which is uh, me, me, me and three other people on there were, were white kids, and they were everybody from 18 years old down. And, and you know, I just uh, had some trouble with some guys, you know, and I wasn't as athletic and all that. So karate was a way I, I wanted to, I, I mean, I loved the sport of it, but I wanted to learn how to fight. Well, it wasn't long before I later found out, you know, that uh, a back fist is not the best technique to use in a real fight. Um, a, a round kick to the head, a flip kick, it probably in blue jeans, not going to work. So I began to open my mind, you know, what works, what doesn't work. So over, fast forward over the years, I got involved in, in, in traditional kickboxing with Doug Reed, I was his sparring partner while he was a fighter. And um, and we worked out like five days a week for like four hours. And I, I learned really good boxing, some boxing skills. Uh, it kind of changed the kicking techniques. And then uh, and later, as I got older, I, I did my own school. And uh, we did, uh, it wasn't no light contact. We we had full contact pretty much all, all the time. We had um, more 
uh, boxing training, but we were still kicking, but we were kicking hard. And it wasn't Muay Thai, it was still karate style, but it was more kickboxing style. And I did that for a few years. And then I met my first Division One. Well, he wasn't Division One. He was actually went to the Junior Olympics as a wrestler. He was from Florida. He was about five, seven, 190. And uh, I realized what I had always feared is that if I got off my feet, I was done. I, I mean, I, I was done. This guy could do whatever he wanted to. I had enough myth about me. You know, he didn't want to try me. He didn't know if I could, you know, karate chop his neck or break his knee. But uh, truth is, he, he would have kicked my tail. He would have took me down. I wouldn't have been able to do nothing. And so, you know, um, but I also loved boxing. I loved Sugar Ray Leonard and, and, and Ray, later Roy Jones Jr., and so I wanted to be a boxer, but we didn't really have boxing. But I got into, you know, boxing training. We did that at the school. I found a guy in Tupelo who was a professional boxer. And he had recently just fought Roberto Duran. And uh, Duran knocked him out in seven. Uh, but Duran went on to win the title from Iran Barkley. It was between, you know, when he got knocked out, or when he quit with Sugar Ray Leonard, he went on. And so I, I kind of recognized my boxing skills were pretty good because I could beat this guy for three rounds easy. But I didn't have the endurance to go four, and, and we always went four. He always got the last round because it was his family and all that. His, uh, his uncle had actually uh, uh, been, uh, oh, one of the professional guys that fought Ali uh, Norton. Ken Norton, Ken Norton's trainer until he got up to a higher level and then he passed him off to, to somebody else. So, I mean, they knew what they were doing. Um, and, um, and then later time goes on, you know, I'm going to work, whatever, but, uh, still love the whole UFC. I found out about Hoist Gracie, found a place in Brookhaven, did a few classes, thought I'd learned something and then later found a place in Jackson. And it was kind of a fight club, big, big metal building like my man cave, matted floors, punching bags, a full ring in the back. And uh, I was needed to get in shape. And it was just hard for me to run on the treadmill and do that kind of stuff. So I, uh, I just called the guy and he was a smart ass to me. He was like, well, just come on. And I was trying to tell him my credentials. He just, just come on, you know. So I showed up, you know. Well, I, I, you know, I started with boxing. The, the guy that they had there that was the main boxer guy, boxing was kind of like just in the corner. It was called uh, judo and kickboxing or boxing, boxing and judo school or something in Byron, Mississippi. And uh, the guy that ran it was John Lewis. He is the athletic director or whatever it is over the boxing. I mean, he's the, whatever you call that. He's the guy over the state of, of all the professional fights. But good friend of mine. Uh, but anyway, so I started boxing just for exercise, um, using the equipment. And there was one guy there whose name was Willie. Willie was the state heavyweight boxing champion. You know, at this time, we've got casinos. We've got a division. We've got boxing schools. And Willie had just won the title. He knocked out his opponent. And he was the state champion. And he had a title defense coming up in about four months. Well, I was... Fat and out of shape, and uh, when I did most of my boxing, I weighed about 165 pounds, and, and now I'm weighing 220. Uh, and Willie's about 208. I mean, he really probably should have been a cruiserweight, but he's about 208, no fat on him, solid muscle. And so I started training with him to be his sparring partner. And uh, there was only one other guy that would fight him. I mean, it was me or Joe, if Joe was there. And um, if he was there, it was great. We'd take turns. Like, he'd do a round, I'd do a round. Um, but I fought Willie for four months. And after, I'm getting to a point here in a second. After four months, um, Willie did his title defense, and he got knocked out. And uh, I, I told him, I said, you're going to get, you cannot, not, not, like, leave this arm down. Because I could hit him anytime I wanted to, and I could, I could buckle his knees. The point after that was he was going to hit me about five or six times, you know, and I, I didn't do a very good job defending myself. Against. Once he started punching, I mean, I was like just a, a punch. But I never got knocked down. But, I mean, it, after four months, my body was telling me, you don't really want to box much anymore. Um, but, I, I mean, I was, I, was, I was in there with Willie. I was competitive. I kind of knew where my boxing still stood. Um, and you know, when I was younger, I wasn't fighting heavyweights. I was fighting middleweights, you know, so this is, this is a true heavyweight. Um, so, uh, but after I would box and I'd be exhausted, I would try the, the jujitsu and we didn't really have a class. I'm getting to the points here. It may take 20 minutes. Get, we didn't have a class. We just kind of had a, 
you want to wrestle, you know? And so, uh, you know, I started wrestling guys. And of course, I picked the worst one. He didn't look very tough, but I was wrong. Um, his name was Randall. He, he, he is a very deceptive beast. But anyway, I'm going to speed this up. For one year, I did the four months, and then I committed pretty much just to the jujitsu primarily. I might punch the bag a few minutes or spar some young guys or whatever. Um, for one year, I did this two to four days a week, and um, I didn't. I, ne I never won. I never beat anybody, and it was all the same guys. It was all the same eight or ten guys that were that were studying this, and and we were all trying to learn this jujitsu stuff. Um, but but most of them had come out of judo, so they actually had some some background to build on, and they'd been doing it for a couple of years before I got there. Well, anyway, I finally a uh, new guy came in. And I, and I got to wrestle him, and I beat him. And that was the first time I ever beat anybody. Well, after that, I would say over the course of the next year, what happened was little by little, it took longer and longer and longer for people to beat me. And, uh, and, and you know, if you, if you, you know, I mean, you get out there when you, when you first start, you might get beat in the first 30 seconds. But, but next, you know, it may be five minutes. It may be 10 minutes, you know. And there's only so long you can do this without gassing out. So, so. My next claim to fame is I started to tie some people. I mean, these are the same people that had been there the whole time, but but got to where we would just have to say, all right, I, I, let's take a break. And we would just take a break. We'd just call that a tie, and we continue. And then eventually I started to beat some people and beat some people and beat some people. Before I left, I was the second best guy there um, as far as winning on, on the mat. Now, there was a couple of guys that had better technique and could do more moves, but they couldn't beat me most of the time. Uh, I mean, I might beat them eight out of 10 times and they might win two out of 10. And, and you know, one's the athletic director and one's got his own jiu-jitsu. I, I, I think Jared take me pretty fast now. He's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, and then Randall was the only guy that was so much more dominant than the rest of us. Um, but I could beat him about two out of 10 times or one out of 10 times. But I'm the only one that could do that. And uh, he was built like Winnie the Pooh. He, uh, he had a huge torso, weighed about 250 pounds, and little short legs. And he could do a weeble wobble. I mean, you just, you couldn't hold him down. And once he put his weight on you, if he wanted to, he could kill you. I mean, if, if you, and he was very sadistic. So, I mean, if you beat him, you were going to pay for it. So the last time we wrestled, I beat him three times in a row. I only ever beat him with the same move. But I got him three times in a row. Uh, and... Uh, and then I would never wrestle him again. And it made him so mad. I knew what he was going to do to me if he got me on the mat again. He was, he was going to take me to the, to the brink of death. Um, love Randall, but I wasn't going to wrestle him again because I, you know, I knew I just, I had, it was a fluke that night. But anyway, here, here's the transition into spiritual gifts. Well, when I started teaching people how to do uh, jujitsu, for example, or even striking, they would say, well, how, how did you do that? I, I would do something. They'd say, how did you do that? And I'd have to think about it. I was like, I don't really know. Um, let's get back down on the mat. Let's, let's, what, what are we doing? Okay, yeah, okay. Now kind of, kind of, because what I, most of what I learned in both martial arts and, and in the spirit is not from technique. It was from body, uh, muscle memory, trial and error, and just drilling and hours and hours and hours um, of doing it where I can feel something and uh, and do it, but I can't tell you like off the top of my head, you know, like what I did. Oh, I pulled this fancy move on you. I, I have to go back and say, well, I just I just did you know this, and that's how I built my my skills. It wasn't as much through technique training; it was through trial and error. And if I got beat by something, I would learn what it felt like. I recognize it. I'd learn how to defend it. Not necessarily for somebody teaching me, just figuring it out. And so in the, the aspect of spiritual gifts, um, it's kind of the same way. I, I don't, like I said, I don't think about um, is this a prophecy, a word of knowledge, or a word of wisdom. But, but there are techniques. I mean, there are techniques in, in spiritual gifts, and there are techniques in whatever. But I think uh, the foundation for that needs to be built on uh, not so much a teaching on the technique of a spiritual gift, but the, the, the spiritual muscle memory of a relationship with the Holy Spirit and learn how to recognize what God's saying. And it doesn't, he might have all three or four gifts working at one time, but you just basically 
going with the flow of what God's saying. And that's, you know, what I kind of did in some of the martial arts stuff. I just kind of went with the the flow of what it, what I, you know, and, and guys that would come in and I'm almost through guys that would come in to, to do the, like to learn something. They wanted to learn something fancy, like show me arm bar, show me a flying arm bar, show me a, a, the, the, the a rear naked choke. And if you, if, I said, I can show you all this, but I said, my advice is come in here for six months and just wrestle. I mean, don't even just, until you get balance and muscle memory and all that, none of this stuff's gonna work. And, and, and I, you know, they wouldn't believe me. And I'm like, well, here, okay. I lay on my, here's my arm. I, yeah, I showed you the technique. Now do the arm bar. And then of course I'd get right out of it because there's so much foundation that needs to be there before the technique has a chance to work with somebody that, that kind of knows anything. I mean, you get a couple of newbies together, it might work, but, uh, but anyway, so, uh, Butch, if I send this to you, I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, this won't make sense to a lot of people, but I thought it might, might to you is, how do I approach the subject of spiritual gifts and be uh, be helpful? I want to encourage people, um, and I don't want to violate. You know, I know you're going to come at it from a teacher's perspective, so I'm curious as to kind of how you're going to kind of kind of position them, some of this stuff. But I'm probably going to tell it kind of like I would tell it for martial arts, and and like my the guy that had the school, he said, you know, you you you. you one quick story. So, so it irritated him that they would bring this jujitsu guy in, one of uh, Hicks and Gracie's black belts, and they'd do like a, a clinic for like three days, and I wouldn't come. I just figured I'd learn what they learned from them when I got back, you know. So, so anyway, I had just missed a, a three-day clinic with, uh, oh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was one of Hicks and Gracie's black belts, if that name means anything to you. That was Hoyce's older brother. And, um, Anyway, so John and I are, are wrestling, and uh, I, I felt like I had him in a chokehold. And uh, his ego would not let him tap because he, because uh, I didn't come to the classes. You know, it just irritated him that I didn't come and try to do the technical stuff, but yet I was still fighting at the level of them or above. And uh, and so I just held on until everybody started screaming, let him go, let him go. And so I let him go, and he's passed out. He, <laughs> you know, doing all that. It's like revive him. I'm like, hey, you revive him. I can't, because I'm, you know, we've been wrestling for 10 minutes. I, I ain't got no air left. I did everything I have to squeeze that chokehold. Um, but, I mean, there's there's value. The guys that get really good learn the technique, and they did learn the muscle memory. I just did it a, a little different way. But, uh, and that's how I probably will approach the whole concept of how, how I move in the spirit. But there are people that teach on how to prophesy or how to pray for the sick and all that kind of stuff. And I've been through some of those classes, kind of like I did the jujitsu class. I went through some of them. But anyway, all right, I'm going to watch this. Maybe I'll send it to you. But uh, just kind of putting some thoughts together.